cases. Your first case this evening is 2017-05206 College. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a conditional use request by 206 College LLC for a bed and breakfast inn I'm located at 206 East College Street. This is along the north side of the road, uh, roughly halfway between Slaver Street and William Street. This is in the Valdosta Local Historic District. It is also in the Berkwood North National Register District. Um, subject property contains a single family residence that is coming up on 100 years old. I guess it's about 90 years old at this point. Uh, fully restored. It's a six bedroom house, two story. Um, the applicant is proposing to convert it to a regular bed and breakfast inn, utilizing up to five of the bedrooms for guests. Um, and of course, the owner would live in the residence. Um, in your packet, there's a whole lot of information, including these maps. But that information includes our supplemental standards for bed and breakfast, as well as some uh, standards and guidelines for the historical overlay district. Conditional uses are not normally um, applicable to a bed and breakfast in residential zones, but because this is in the local historic district, it is eligible. Character area, um, as you might imagine, with the Berkwood North neighborhood is established residential. Um, the aerial shows, of course, the old urban uh, tree canopy and the rooftops of many homes, many of which are historic. Um, in the area, it's a little bit hard to discern, but there are some non-single-family residential uses there, uh, including some churches and some apartment buildings. You see the RM zoning on the block to the north, and there's a little bit more um, off to the east. The house, um, Craftsman Stop, historic residence, two-story. Um, site plan that's in your packet, uh, which is not in here. Wow, okay. It's in your packet that shows two driveways, the aerial. Um, you can kind of see sort of the driveway aprons, but they're better seen in these photographs. Um, there's a driveway on the west side, and then one on the east side, which is more visible there. Um, the property lines between the budding houses follow those driveways. The driveway to the east used to be a former alley that was 20 feet wide. Um, the applicant's driveway is on their side of the abandoned alley, 10 feet wide, and then the residence next door has the other one. And they share aprons out to East College Street. Um, other properties nearby, single family residences, these are the houses on either side, and then across the street, and as you can see, it's all similar style architecture. Tax cards of these properties indicate they were built in the 1920s. Standards for the review of conditional use, uh, conditional use review criteria are in your packet, and there are answers there by the applicant as well as staff. Um, this is one of the uses that is targeted for historical properties as an alternative to single family use, um, as long as it's an accessory to the primary use as a residential. And of course, that's why the standards are there, so that the owner or the operator of the facility must reside on the property. Um, planning commissioner, planning staff, of course, has reviewed this against all of those criteria, and we're making a finding of consistency with the comprehensive plan and the conditional use review standards for the recommendation for approval with a series of five conditions, and they are as follows. Approval shall be granted in the name of the applicant only for a bed and breakfast in an R10 zoning and historical overlay district for the existing building in accordance with the submitted conceptual site plan and adherence to all supplemental LDR requirements for such use. Number two, all parking shall be on site and located in the rear yard only with a minimum of five parking spaces. Vehicular access shall be in the form of residential one-way drives the final driveway design and materials are being approved by the city engineer and the Historic Preservation Commission. Number three, the property shall continue to maintain its residential character and historic appearance is approved by the Historic Preservation Commission. Number four, signage shall be limited to either one incidental wall sign not to exceed five square feet or one freestanding sign not to exceed four square feet and three feet in height. And lastly, Initial use approval shall expire after two years from the date of approval if the applicant has not made the required site improvements and submitted a business license application for a better breakfast in by that date. The applicant is here if you have some questions for him, otherwise I'd be glad to answer any additional questions you may have for me. Just a few, Matt, did you say last week that 
I, I, maybe I won't speak out of turn yet, that is currently being used somewhat like this now, or? We have Airbnb facilities, with about five of them operating in town. Um, this is one of those five. Uh, those are currently recognized as a home occupation, um, but we, our staff believes that's sort of an inadequate way to address that kind of use, and we're still researching alternatives. Either <coughs> change the standards for home occupation, home business, or create a separate line item in our use tape. Um, Airbnbs are a lower key version of a bed and breakfast, uh, typically smaller, um, less known to the surroundings. <laughs> This has operated that way for a few months. Um, and I think the applicant will tell you they did that sort of as a trial run to see if it was the type of business they would want to get into. And I think we decided yes, and therefore they're coming forward as a bed and breakfast. Okay. And, and uh, what, was, what was your, I know we discussed it briefly last week about the encroachment on the driveway on the adjoining property. Do you have any hard burn with that or what can we work out with that? None. It's part of the site plan. It's just the final design and materials of it need to be approved by the city engineering department. Um, these are existing driveway curb cuts on the East College as shared driveways between those properties. Um, the main driveway that would be used is the one on the east side, which is a little bit wider. And there are existing driveways there. They're just not completely paved. Yeah. And staff has no issue with those as long as they maintain the residential look and that all parking is in to the rear of the building. So in other words, from the street, it will still look like it does today, except with some minor improvements to drivers. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Commissioner Bolton? Yeah, I Man, I, I don't, <coughs> that seems to be completely at odds with one of your other conditions, that stance about the driveways being on two properties, because in one condition, you require that there be one-way drives on each side. But if a if an adjoining neighbor, after this is approved, shuts down a portion of the drive and you can't use it, then that that completely nullifies your your driveway plan. So why shouldn't you know some sort of you know driveway easement, joint driveway agreement, something be a condition to the condition of use? I mean, so it seems like to me you either got to have both, or you have, or you can. Because you're blessing, you know, you're blessing a, basically an illegal use of a drought. That, that's what I was looking at, also. Yeah. So just make an attachment condition, if you will, Mr. Bolson. You can modify the language of that condition, certainly. The way staff looked at it as existing drives with prescriptive easements already in place, but strengthening that might not be a bad idea. Commissioners, any other questions for staff? I do have a question. Commissioner Mountry? Is that backyard able to accommodate five parking spaces? Very easily. Okay, and there is also a street side parking. Um, there is this yellow curve. There is no street no side street parking, side. nor would we want street side parking associated with this but, facility. But, but it is across the street. Because one of the photos you had had showed two cars mm -hmm. parked on the curb. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Yes, it's not a yellow curve over there. So they could park there if they wanted to? They could on the other side of the street. It's just, given the type of use in the area, I would not want to encourage on-street parking. And particularly in this case, it would be overnight. I know Brookwood North, for on-street parking, it's usually college students, mm -hmm. um, which is a little different than what's been proposed to. Commissioners, any other questions for staff? There being none, is anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward at this time and state your name and your address for the public record. My name is Greg Moore. My address is 507 George Avenue and part-time at 206 East College Street. Um, I'm the owner of 206 College LLC and the current Airbnb. The, the name of the bed and breakfast would be the Cottage on College. And when I, um, my background is real estate, so when I purchased the property, I made sure that it could become a bed and breakfast, so that was the permitted use in the area. And um, like Matt said, I experimented with the Airbnb if you, uh, concept. And if you're not familiar with it, Airbnb is a facilitator online that you can go to their website. I have my house listed. I had um, Brandon Powers, former uh, photographer for the Dallas Daily Times, to do a photo shoot of the house and so it's listed there professionally 
I have it set up with five bedrooms, um, three, uh, two bath, two and a half baths right now, and um, plan to renovate one into a third bath. So um, it started out, if I wasn't going to close on it with Guardian Bank unless I got some bookings with Airbnb. So I gave it a month and um, I had about six or seven bookings and it's gone well since then. Um, I've made friends with the neighbors. I plan on living there. It's got a great master suite that I can live in. So um, I'm going to uh, live there full time. Um, beside it to the east is, it is a residential house. However, it's a um, college rental. And in the backyard, there's a uh, garage apartment. On the west side is uh, my neighbor that y'all uh, had questions about the shared driveway, um, Mr. Bolson. That, um, that where you see the car in the, you can see it in the picture, there is an established tree line and uh, they have a privacy fence up. So they don't utilize that driveway. The current resident doesn't. However, I have spoken with her and I just wasn't able to get that in writing with her on that easement, but it does fall into the prescribed easement. But um, she's okay with having that in writing because I've utilized that driveway uh, since I've been there and it was being utilized prior. Uh, to even her buying her house next door. Uh, yes, there is parking across the street. However, like Matt said, um, in the Brookwood North um, District, they have set hours on there to uh, keep the college students from parking uh, around the clock there. And I don't recommend that to my, um, um, to my guests. So um, right now and for the foreseeable future, I'm booked out through next May um, currently. and. Uh, it's small groups. I thought it would be large groups on the weekend. The house can sleep 10. So I figured I'd rent it out three weekends a month. And um, and I would stay at another residence I, I have in town. And I would do, operate it that way. However, what I found is it's smaller groups, mostly during the week. A lot of business travelers, a lot of consultants with the university. I do get some um, weekends where I have um, folks come in and stay for university or weddings or uh, different types of functions, so but it's always small groups. So the parking, they usually um, I haven't had more than three cars at one time so far. Um, let's see what oh they they cannot be less than age 21. Uh, I speak to everyone uh, by phone before I, um, before I agree to rent to them, and I also meet everyone at the house to let them in, and so I lay eyes on everybody that rents the house. So I have a. I have a huge investment in the property, in the furnishings of the property, so it's in my best interest to, to meet everybody there. So me or a family member, uh, at one time I was out of town, so I had a family member meet, meet the folks for me. So I make sure it's not college kids renting it for a big party, slide that in, you know, under the radar or anything. So, y'all have any other questions for me? Just a quick question, when you were around current Restrictions apply for the bed and breakfast? Yes, I'm not going to change how I, how I operate it. Um, B and B bed and breakfast. I I call myself a B and C bed and coffee or bed and Craig actually because I don't I don't do breakfast. So um, I do have uh, menus for all the restaurants and um, I already have an agreement with Jesse's downtown for ten bucks. They'll deliver for two people. So um, but I don't plan on. No cooking breakfast, none of that. So I, I provide a Craig with coffee. They have sodas and bottled water and then cook their own. So that's the beauty of, a, of um, Airbnb. They can come in and use it as a house, even though they're traveling. So. Congratulations to you. So just one quick question. What's the, what's the average stay time? Two days, three days? Two days. Two days. Yeah. Commissioners, any other questions for presenting? Thank you much, Mr. Moore. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? I'll speak in favor of it. Come forward, please, sir. State your name and your address for a record, please, sir. Um, Craig Tomlinson, 1605 Clayton Street. Um, my property, um, but that to be on the north side, on the rear. And um, my family's been property owners. Um, at 1605 for 50 plus years, so I'm very familiar with the area. And I did become to speak for or against, but um, since you're voting on it or whatever, uh, I'm for it. It's good for the neighborhood. Um, I 
I said, I'm very familiar with the neighborhood and uh, it's going through a lot of changes in 50 years. And um, I think it'll be a positive. Uh, the only question, and Mr. Moore and I just met briefly in my backyard just a couple months ago, so I haven't even spoken to him about speaking um, for this. Um, just uh, the parking in the backyard would, you know, maybe affect my property, but I'm confident that he would um, make any um, changes that would need to be done to um, satisfy that. So, um, for what it's worth, I'm in favor. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Any questions for a presenter? Thanks again for coming forward. Anyone here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak against this request? There being none, the public portion of this is now complete. Commissioners, any discussion amongst ourselves before we ask for a motion? There being none, I will ask for a motion this time. I'll make a motion. <clears throat> um, I'll make a motion to recommend this request as um, presented with the five conditions. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion before I ask for a vote? Chris Paulson? I plan to make a motion, but I have one, one additional suggestion for a condition. Uh, I don't know if you would amend your motion to do this, but conditional use shall not be valid until a joint driveway use easement agreement is executed and reported with the owner of the parcel to the west of the subject property. I can't tell you. I mean, we're, we're I think we are sanctioning something that could turn out to be an issue later on mm -hmm. if you rezone this without that particular condition because no matter how amenable the, the adjacent property owner is now, if they sell that property and somebody takes those trees down and takes that fence down and says, this is my land line, and puts a fence down the middle of the driveway, we've just, uh, conditional use-wise, his property is is useless because we've, we've conditioned the driveways to be one way in, one way out. Now they're only one way in and no way out. So you, you have to have this in place, in my, my opinion. So I can provide that to Comel if you want to amend your motion to include it. Or withdraw your motion and I'll make it up. <laughs> <laughs> or if you don't want to amend it. So, Commissioner Gladwell, you, you were going to amend your, mm, yes. your motion to include the garbage, Commissioner Polson. Commissioner Polson, if you will repeat that again, Carmel is actually trying to write that down. <laughs> I'll be glad to provide it after, Carmel. But it says conditional use shall not be valid until a joint driveway use and easement agreement is executed and reported with the owner of the parcel to the west of the subject property. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is the second still good? I need to ask for a still good. Second still good, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor, please say by raising your right hand. Ms. Carmel, that's 8-0, passage announcement. Thank you very much. Matt, you got one more this evening. It is VA 2017-15 Northway Community 